<laughs> We've done 37 of these. Yeah. Welcome to the Greg and Tim show. Yeah. Yeah. I just thought you meant something specifically. Like, <laughs> no, don't worry about that at all. All right. You're all good. Okay. Do you need me to slap you again? <laughs> Can you slap me once? No. No, just once. You can. An actual slap? Yeah. No. Slap, just do it. Do it. Oh, oh. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Get your earballs ready. Welcome to the Greg and Tim Show podcast. Take time to sit back and relax and enjoy the show. Here are your hosts, Greg and Tim. Well, welcome to the Greg and Tim Show. To my immediate Just right, jumping to in. the viewers left, <laughs> is my buddy Greg. Viewers. You're right, viewers left. Two truths, one lie, Stewart. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot. <laughs> That's, good, a, that's, my, that's look, a great intro. You're looking good, my friend. Yeah, and you're looking the same. <laughs> the same? <laughs> yeah, the same as you always look. I don't think Except so. you have a beard. That's right. Yeah, do I look different? Uh, you look extremely different. There's okay. something, uh, can't something put my finger different on it. about me. Eh? Uh, today, <laughs> we have a special guest in our studio. We do. Her name is Ali Raposo. She is an entrepreneur, a speaker, a researcher, an amazing advocate for mental health. She works with the city of Winnipeg. She works with the Canadian Association for Suicide Prevention. She has her own therapy clinic as well. She's doing like everything. And on top of that, she's starting a podcast with one of our former guests. Yeah, that's the connection. We had Jasmine Lane here Yes, a few number of weeks ago. And uh, you are doing... Uh, well, a... well, let's welcome her in. Welcome in. Welcome to the <laughs> Thanks show. Thanks so much for having me. <laughs> first things first, um, you had, you're one of the few guests... Because we try to get guests in. We ask many times and they say no half the time. Mm. Sometimes it's difficult to get dates. Half the time? It's like uh, 99%, 99 of the time. Of the time. Yeah. <laughs> You're the first person that contacted us and actually wanted to be on our podcast. And we want to know, they want to know, Greg wants to know why. Well, uh, I heard really good things from my business partner, Jasmine. So she had just like recently, recently before I reached out, done an episode with you guys and she was hooting and hollering about it. And she said it was a really great time. A lot of the time, um, she and I both will say yes to things and then we dread them. You know, like we're like, all oh, week it gets closer to it. And we're like, uh, why oh, we did we do say not yes want to, do to that? that? <laughs> but then we were like, hey, we didn't, she didn't dread it. She was like, it's actually a really good time. So I was like, oh, okay. She's like, you should do it. Like, they're just starting up and they have a really cool thing going. I think they're probably going to definitely go somewhere with it. And um, so I was like, okay, done deal. I listened to her and I'm glad I did. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Well, you've just met us. So mm. let's yeah. let's leave the judgment to right. the end here right. because there might be some things that we get into <laughs> that you are like, how do we talk about that and why do we talk about that? But first things first, how was your day going? Good. Um, better now. Traffic is crazy. Yeah, like insane. Winnipeg. Yeah. Well, I also live out of the city, so I was working from home today. Oh, okay. Um, and so I live out in like St. Anne. Okay. So there's like construction everywhere in the city, but like also on the highways right now. So like kind of by Deacon's Corner, it was yeah. like backed up and I'm like, oh, I left early because I wanted to stop and get myself french fries. But then I was like, <laughs> I need to budget more time in other ways. But work was work was a little chaotic, but the drive was definitely more chaotic, but I'm feeling good now. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling calm and over being in my vehicle. Where, where yeah. were you going to get french fries? Well, it was originally going to be A&W because Deacon's Corner, but then I was like, that's not happening. That right yep. turn in there is just, it's it's a total no-go. Yep. And so then I was just going to do McDonald's. And so I dropped my dog off on the way here and my grandma brought me a little snack plate. Nice. And so I didn't have Grandmas. to do any, I know, I didn't have to do anything. It was perfect. So no french fries, but what did grandma bring you? It was like a little array of bacon and cheese and i think it was turkey like just like little like pickings but honestly it is exactly what i needed i didn't want to like shove anything yeah. big <laughs> in my stomach but it was just like a little bit of peppers and pickles just something to get you yeah by. just something to get me by but, if like, you need a power me. bar or anything just let us know we no got, i'll like, be good i'll we be got good a whole bunch that was stuff. With, with power bars? <laughs> well i do yes i give i'll let ali have i never heard about these <laughs> Wait, I just got them at Costco with you. Okay. Remember? Yeah. Remember, you're like, those ones aren't good. And I got them anyway. So that's why I got them. <laughs> anyway, so one of our first questions that we always ask our guest is sometimes a hard question. Our last guest was actually prepared because they did an exercise on a phone call about this actual question. Oh, interesting. So the question is 
we're going to get to know you as a professional, but not as a professional. Who is the real Ali Raposo? The real Ali Raposo. That's a loaded question, but I love it. Um, <laughs> I think also because I'm often so stuck in the professional world that like yeah. I'll go from one hat to the next from like, you know, politics to counseling to uh, board of directors work. And so that never really is like a thing that comes up. So I love that. Um, I'm a Portuguese woman. My dad immigrated to Canada. Okay. Um, so... I grew up in like a very traditional home. I, my mom and my dad are divorced, but my family's like super gung ho, all about the culture. And so that was how I grew up with my cousins running around my grandparents' house. And um, that was kind of my, my upbringing. I played soccer all my life. So that has a huge influence on who I am now. But so I'd say th that might be why you and Jasmine get along so well. She loves soccer. <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> well, she yeah. more so loves watching the people. dramatics, yeah. right? Yeah, it's I know. Watching soccer, drunk, drunk, yeah, mm -hmm. drunk, yeah, drinking while watching Do you soccer. Also, drink while watching soccer. Or just enjoy soccer sober. Oh, you have to drink when you watch <laughs> soccer, especially like when you're in World Cups and stuff. That stuff gets heated, man. <laughs> like it gets crazy. So do you do you do the whole soccer like when you're playing? Are you falling over? Are you? dramatizing things honestly like are you a part-time actor while you're playing the game <laughs> <laughs> honestly like there was some girls that i was like what's in their water man because we were way smaller than them just like in general like i was like they're way older than us they gotta be somebody check their birth certificates because yep. they were like big like they were just way bigger than us and so i'd get taken out there was no need for dramatics like i would be <laughs> flying across the field they're probably the like interlake girls though right it was always like, oak bank yeah <laughs> oak yeah. bank girls they were <laughs> just, bigger in the country they are and so yeah um that was kind of a huge piece of who i am today like i still want to play i'm definitely like totally gassed when i run now but i try um what else about ali i guess I'm a total introvert. Like, I'm an extroverted introvert. So, like, if you work with me, everybody would probably think the opposite because I'm very much so out there. But, yep. like, I'm totally cool with just living doing, at, whatever. doing nothing at home. Like, yeah. I have chickens and I have pigs and I have a big yard I need to take care of. And like, So, you're in the country. You can that's have my, all those kind of animals. That's my thing. Yeah. yeah. Like, I love that. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so we actually – there's a term for that. It's called – I think it's called an ambivert. Okay. That's an extrovert, introvert, and that's sometimes this, I'm the same way. Yeah. Where sometimes you know you feel like very, very outgoing, and other times it's just kind of chill time. Right? Yeah, well, we, totally. We, we should bring up the first topic. Then. You actually said what our next question was. If you mm. take a look at the board, if you take a look behind you, it says topic two: introvert versus extrovert. You, wow. you actually, you actually beat it. Don't don't skip ahead though. <laughs> okay. Don't no, I only, read the, I only read the second one. I swear. <laughs> So you say that you're an introvert. Yeah. What What is your definition of an introvert? Mm, I think for me, it's about like a social battery is what I always go back to. Um, and like my partner gets it now. Like it's kind of like this spoken language where I'm like, dude, I'm at like a 40%. Like okay. my social battery, if we're going out and like speaking with other people or going out for drinks or even whatever like it has to be somebody i really want to go out with okay. otherwise it's like going to require at least like 80 percent social battery right so it's all about my battery like i wish i had like a little thing on top of my head that would <laughs> like show it to people yeah exactly <laughs> but like that's all it's about for me and i get exhausted like if i have a ton of stuff out and i'm like you know like networking and doing work stuff like this is chill but like at work and stuff i'm just like my social battery like depletes like yeah. hugely and so i think just like being at a home is my thing being alone even like my partner is a railroader and he goes away for a couple of days and like i'm okay with it like yeah. I'm, you know what i mean like i'm not losing sleep chill time that. to yourself yeah. relax it's like i actually like my battery goes i'm like putting it up here now because yeah. that's where it should be it just like charges I'll put it up there yeah post like, for you <laughs> it charges when i'm alone so like i just i think that that's hugely what i would think as an introvert, is that the same for you guys? So it's in interesting that you asked that question of us because that's kind of the way our conversation was going to be built. Um, so uh, we've discussed this in past episodes. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's funny because the definition that – why don't you tell the definition that you yeah. had of – Of introvert and extrovert. Yeah. So an introvert is somebody who gains energy 
Hmm. from being alone. One person's definition. Yeah. Right. And an extrovert gains energy by being social. Mm -hmm. So an introvert doesn't necessarily not want to be social. Yeah. They just lose their energy by being social. Whereas an extrovert, if they're at home by themselves, they have to go out to gain yeah. their energy, right? Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of people think of the definition of an introvert as being somebody who just doesn't want to socialize, somebody that wants to be stayed, staying in, closed in, that yeah. type of thing. Whereas um, Tim and I have actually come to understand that we're actually opposites. The and I'll go from there. Yep. Um, so because we live so many years of our life and we behaviorally, environmentally, we learn to deal with certain things in different ways. Uh, we think that, first of all, I think I am a an extrovert okay. in that I gain energy by being around people. However, I've learned introverted tendencies through life, through whatever 40 some odd years mm. that I've lived. And Greg is the opposite. He thinks that he loses energy. So he is actually an introvert, quote unquote, but he actually I has have extroverted, extroverted tendencies. tendencies. Mm. Okay, I can I can relate to that one because yeah. I sometimes I think it's totally situational and dependent on what I'm doing, what like the actual activity is and yeah. who it's with. Yeah. Um that will totally change it cuz sometimes I can hang out with like one of my girlfriends and I'm like totally energized from it. But yeah. then if it's like you know, hanging with family or distant family or like a, like a, I don't know, something that's just like not very exciting. Yes. Somebody that you need a social, know you know, like somebody that you need social battery yeah. for. It's yeah. like yeah. drained. I did not say that. <laughs> Do not throw me under that bus. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't say that. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, yeah, exactly. Like you have different areas where you're going to gain energy. Like, after this interview, I'll be drained mm -hmm. just because like we're going to be socializing this whole time. And at the end, Lorraine will be like, hey, can you go do this and go do that? I'm like, I am done. Right? Yeah, like, I'm I, my done. battery is low. Yeah, so I have to take like a few moments by myself. I'll go into my office and I'll start uploading everything and mm -hmm. start like recharging. Yeah. And then I'll go upstairs and, and help with the kids and put them to bed and that type of thing, right? So I love that. I love the recharging because I'm just like picturing you as like a Mario <laughs> Plugging player, in. Or, like something. Like, <laughs> yeah. so, so let's say you get down to your 18%. How do you recharge? What are your favorite things to do to recharge? Mm, so definitely being outside side given that it's nice enough weather like if it's really gray or anything then I will hide from the outside because I feel like my mood is so dependent like I know that it's for everybody you can have like some sort of impact by weather just based off of you know yeah. the sun and or lack of circadian rhythm mm -hmm. and so for me like I genuinely will feel very lethargic and gross if it's like that outside and like I am a product of the weather yeah maybe mental but who knows and so I think for me it's just either going outside or sitting and just listening to music and like mindless music I've never been like a tv girl or like a show girl or any of that stuff like a movie every now and then is is good yeah but I just like I'm I'm you all about binge? No, no like I have binged a couple things if it's like I don't know like if it's like killer stuff you know what i mean okay. or like crime and true crime like that's like my jam but i just i can't do like tv shows and stuff like that so mostly just music chilling with my dog and just like being alone and like resting yeah yeah that's one of my loves is uh, true crime i'm a big mafia enthusiast. okay yeah do you follow mafia stuff at all just like I guess vicariously through my dad and he was okay. always talking about like Portuguese mafia growing up and there's how, a Portuguese mafia? I don't know. It's just one of those things <laughs> that my, right? my, like if my I, uncle's Portuguese. It's, yeah, and, it's just like if I had a boyfriend, my dad and the Portuguese mafia would come oh, out. Oh, that so kind of one Portuguese of those mafia. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's like, you don't want to mess around with that because, you know. <laughs> yeah. No, that makes sense. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Tim's big into mafia. We, uh, Follow this uh, person named Michael Franzese. Okay. And he's one of the few made men that is still alive and not in jail. Oh. In, in the 1990s, there was a list of top 50 uh, U.S. born mafia, like wealthiest mafia people. And he was number 18 and John Gotti was number 13. Oh, wow. And of the 50 people on that list, he is the only one still alive or, or and out of prison. 
So. Oh, wow. So if you have any contact through the Portuguese mafia, mm-hmm. Tim would like to have him on the show. Yeah, so. <laughs> absolutely. Can you imagine? He actually spoke at a church that we went to in Vancouver. Oh, well, that's a very interesting parallel. <laughs> yeah. He since has turned his life around. Okay. Yeah. So he's, he's a born-again Christian, okay. and he's actually speaking at churches and telling his testimony at churches now. That is so cool. Yeah. What a cool way to retire. I know, right? It would be... Because um, in the old mafia term, retired meant something else. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> he actually, right? quote, unquote, retired. Closer? Lots of two, both of us have got our mics suggested. Mm-hmm. You're just a quieter guy than me. Quieter than me. <laughs> he put he Greg put the mic in front of me. Like, really? yeah. I'm just belting it out. I have to change the levels after you, the yeah, fact. Yeah, you put so. the mic in front of my mouth. I'm sorry. Okay. I tried putting it closer. <laughs> All right. Back so, to the killing people stuff. <laughs> Back to the mafia. <laughs> so so yeah, so true crime is something that you that you enjoy then? Yeah, like I mean if I'm going to binge something, it's gotta be like some sort of like crazy True Making a murder? Thing. Did you watch that? Uh, no. Oh, I'm mo- I'm mostly <laughs> thinking about like old school stuff, but also anything to do with like like for instance this baby reindeer thing that came out. Not necessarily true crime, but like anything also kind of weird. Okay. Right, like anything that's also like like I used to love watching Intervention, and um like my my obsession, my strange obsession is like TLC stuff, like oh, just okay. crazy weird when it stopped stuff. Being TLC and yeah, being I like, don't even know what AT and T. I don't even know anymore. It, well, it's still TLC, but it? it's not the Learning Channel anymore. Okay, I don't know it's what not. It stands it's for. something's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's all gone wild. It's like the musical artist TLC, right? No, it's no, oh, a whole different there TLC. Is a thing, but there's yeah. also <laughs> <laughs> the uh, so making murder is probably one of the only ones I watched, but I watched one, and I think I sent it to you. About a um, mafia family that actually bought a hockey team. Oh. And it was really cool because it like blended hockey, which I, I like sports, with the mafia. Yeah. So, well, it, what a nice little mix. That's right. <laughs> what a Can fun mix. Can you imagine mix. playing for that team and finding out that your your team's owned by the mafia? <laughs> You've been cut. No, really. <laughs> no, literally. <laughs> yeah, you're, no. You're, you're out of here. <laughs> you need something different here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, so introvert, extrovert, you find yourself to be an introvert, which kind of leads us into the next question. Um, have you ever heard of the word, uh, Jomo? No. Um, okay. Have you ever heard the word FOMO? Yeah. Fear of missing out. Okay. Okay. So Jomo. Joy? Ah, okay. Of missing out. Okay. So FOMO versus Jomo is another thing that we've talked about in the past and we want the reason why we want to bring it up to you is because you have like a little bit of a counseling, well, not a little bit, you have a counseling yeah. background, a, a whole <laughs> counseling background. Um, and it's something that is interesting to us because we we heard it spoken on and then we discussed it with each other about like, he thinks that I'm FOMO. I think that I have a blend of both, even though he'll argue it till he's blue in the face. If you're an <laughs> introvert, do you think that you have JOMO? Mm, that's a good one. I think maybe when I was younger and it was more like, what is everybody doing on the weekends or like going out and stuff like that? Maybe I'd have a little bit of FOMO. But I think as time goes on and like hangovers become way too real, <laughs> I have a little bit of JOMO in that sense. Um, But also like I've just, I think I used to be a lot like that, especially with work. Like if I didn't go to all the events or like see it and then I'd see pictures of like all these networking after and like cool people that went and I'm like, yeah. oh, I could have got a picture with that guy. <laughs> but like now I'm like, I don't care about that guy. You know, like I think it's just like something over the years that have shifted. I, I think it's just age and experiences because now i'm like meh yeah you know, like it's like i'll probably just shake it off type thing but um i know like my partner is the total opposite like he is fomo all day long and like extrovert so all day long like even as he's grown up he's yeah still oh, he's FOMO. so extroverted so fomo and i'm just like well good on you man because yeah. <laughs> i can't <laughs> you said he's a railroader right mm-hmm. so yeah. he's my brother's also a railroader okay He's on the road for two days, yeah. going back and forth by himself or with one other person, yeah. that type of thing. Do you think that his battery is overcharged? No, like he, when he comes when he back, comes back, he is so drained just because okay. it's one person. And usually like 
they don't get along or like there's just nothing to talk about or the other person doesn't want to talk and he does. Yeah. And so like he's just like dying for like social interaction when he gets home. So that that definition then really works true to him. Yes. Because he's not gaining energy by being by himself. No, he's, he's not. literally draining himself. He is. And now he's got to Yeah, he's go like a zombie out. when he gets back. For the benefit of the viewer. What is a railroader again? Well, he, <laughs> for Tim, actually, the benefit of a, Tim. I, if I if I'm not a hundred percent sure what it is, I think I do. Someone else might not be either. He's an engineer for CN, so he's a locomotive engineer. So not like engineer engineer, but like he drives the train engineer and he sits with the conductor. So he's okay. always paired up with a conductor. And I hear all about how either good or crappy. It totally depends. If it was like a cool conductor and they got to talk a lot, he's like mid, like he's like a fifty percent battery. Yeah. But if it's like a really lame conductor, then he's like, like just, an older guy. Yeah, that's that just, grumpy and in the some world. of them just sleep, honestly, which is kind of alarming. But <laughs> I don't know if that's allowed. <laughs> yeah, like they just do, you know? Like I've gotten a few like pictures of guys like full head tilt, just like snoring. I'm like that's oh, wow. scary. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. that's interesting. Yeah, because I I know that my brother uh, talks about it. Like he's not allowed to be on his phone. Mm -hmm. He's got to be very like alert during yeah. the time. So maybe they can trade off. I don't know how that works, but no, I don't know how it works. We I won't just... say his name, so yeah. we won't uh, throw him under the bus on yeah, this one. No. Or the train. Or the train. <laughs> you beat me to it. <laughs> throw him under the train. <laughs> yeah. Throw mama from the. Is it what was it called? Throw, Throw Mama, Mama from, from the, the train? train? Yeah, you might be too young for that movie. <laughs> yeah, I think I might be because <laughs> I never was, heard of it. <laughs> You've never heard of it? <laughs> no, a, but that's what uh, like is that a movie John name? Candy? John Candy and uh, Steve Crystal? Steve Martin, Steve Martin and yeah. Billy Crystal, I think. Yeah, like OG yeah. comedians. Like, it's just like quite the name. Right? Do you know John Candy? Do you know um, Steve Martin? Steve Martin. I'm really bad for that. Okay. Like, you, terrible. Have well, she doesn't seen watch TV old or movies. movies. Like, if I said some classic old movies, would you know them? Depends on if I consider them classic. Yeah. <laughs> no, maybe not classic. Do you know Gremlins? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I know Gremlins. Come on. <laughs> like, what is with Gremlins? <laughs> <laughs> I think Jasmine actually loves that movie. She does. She always wants That's to watch it. That's why I asked it. if so you weird. knew Gremlins, too. Like, I don't, I don't rely on that one or go back to it, but she definitely does. Okay. Yeah, that's her, that's her thing. Well, that's how you know she talks about it mm -hmm. probably all the time. Oh, all the time. She wants yeah. to watch it all the time. So what would the earliest childhood movie that you have in your brain right now? The earliest one for that, like that right she away. Watched or that, she's gone back. That, that you can remember watching. Right away was Sound of Music. Like that's the okay, first that's thing. That's a really that, old movie though. Yeah, like that's just the I remember watching it at my grandparents' house and singing along okay. with it. That's like definitely where I went right away in my brain. I don't think I've ever seen that movie. I've what? seen it and I've done yeah. the musical. I've also You've done the musical? Yeah, I was in I love that. I was in a children's choir when I was young. <laughs> that's so cool. The, uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's always something weird. Yeah. The children's <laughs> choir. You know the sound of music. That's not that. A children's choir is weird. Yeah, children I was not in a children's in a choir, choir. Is weird. Yeah, I played <laughs> baseball and stuff. Yeah, I also played baseball. <laughs> I, I also baseball. I also played baseball and sang in a children's choir. <laughs> yeah, you could you can good. do both. Yeah, you can so the do sound both. the like sound that. of music. Um, I haven't seen. And what was the other one that we were talking about the other day? Uh, I can't remember. It's right over my head right now. And don't bring up Bull Durham again. I still haven't seen it. So Bull Durham, you probably haven't in seen that either. I haven't mm -hmm. watched that Mafia hockey team documentary. Yet. That I sent you like two years ago? Yeah, but I told you to watch Bull Durham too and you haven't done that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're a little off the rails here. Uh, um, we have our guest here. We should talk to <laughs> we her. We should now. talk to her instead. Um, do yeah. you want to go on to the next thing or do you want to continue on this one? Well, I think in terms of like the FOMO Jomo part is... You sorry. You said before. I think uh, before we even talked about FOMO Jomo. You said sometimes you say yes to things and then you regret them afterwards. Yes. So I'm do you have a hard time saying no? No. Um, no. That's that's a thing. Like if it's an immediate in my brain, I'm like that would suck and I would hate it. I would yeah. say no. Right. There was actually a thing a little while ago. I had a request for somebody to come out and they're like, you can get free um, products out of all of this. You just got to come and like do it. And I was like, okay. At the time, I was like, this is one of those things that I feel like I'm gonna <laughs> hate later. Yeah. And so I actually did call Jasmine and I was like, I'm in a dilemma right now. And what should I do? And she's like let me look into this and she's like immediately no you're not doing it yeah. stop we have to both not do things that we don't want to do right. and so i was like okay i was already on the fence about it so i'm getting better with it over time like when i was younger i felt like i had to like 
it's almost like a resume you got to build up like you got to yeah. you know network and do the free pro bono stuff and do all that whatever yeah. but now i'm like you know i'm just like <laughs> I'm, it's not gonna happen because i know that i will cancel yeah. on you and i hate canceling i'd rather just say no up front than be like that jerk that yeah. cancels like a day before where you're like on the couch you're like oh i have that thing tomorrow i don't want to go and then you go. just go and you got it out and yeah and it's, you're not all there for it exactly but you know there has been times where i thought i wasn't gonna go and then i just went and then i'm like okay i'm kind of happy that i went actually yeah. it was actually a really nice time <laughs> yeah because sometimes you don't aren't aware of exactly what exactly your expectations don't meet what it actually yeah is. exactly yeah but that's why that's why i have a timeshare I went to something I shouldn't have. But anyway. I was actually going to say, <laughs> so that actually sounded like a timeshare that you were getting offered to go to. You get free stuff mm -hmm. if you sit through all this stuff, right? right? And then you're like, okay, so I'm going to be sitting here for like five <laughs> hours. How much is this worth to me, right? Yeah, That's literally. Five hours. Uh, that, the timeshare? How that, long was your timeshare? Um, Eight and a half? No, it wasn't. It was a couple hours. And that's what funded our trip to uh, Florida a number of years ago was timeshares. We just wow. kept going to timeshares and... Are you yay or nay for timeshares? Um, I've never experienced them myself, but I mean, I've heard total mixed bag. Yeah. Total mixed bag. Just keep saying no. Yeah, no. exactly. No. But the, you the, said answer, yes. no. the answer is no. <laughs> the one time. And we use it now, so. It's okay. I, I also get yeah. to use it once. There you go. Twice. That's right. So before we get into a little bit more about what you actually do, we have one more topic that's a fun topic. And I kind of want to figure out if you, through your counseling, to see if you've um, come across this before, uh, the five love languages. Have you heard of this before? Mm -hmm, I have. Okay. Yes. Do you know your love language? Wait, well, first of all, are we quizzing your first to know what the five love, love languages are? Well, okay, let's Mark. ask. Okay, this is a good one yeah. because I've heard about them, but I'm not crazy. Let me see what we got. Here we go. We've These got... are from Marks, by the way. Okay, yeah. good. Um, you get graded at the, the end. Pressure. <laughs> um, so what is that word that I'm thinking of? There's touch. There's yeah. quality time. Yeah. Um, there is gestures, like um, something about, what is it? You, you can help me out now. Is it, is it <laughs> acts of service? Acts of service. Yeah, okay, three, like, yeah. that was it. it was <laughs> three, so close. Three, yeah. Um, I got quality time. Touch, quality time, acts of service. When you say things. Oh, affirmations. Words of affirmation. Words of yeah. affirmation. Give me one of those. That was a nice hint for the last one. I like and that. You're doing an excellent job. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. What's and like, number five is. I'm forgetting. Give me a hint. Uh, Christmas. Oh right, when you hear gifts. There we That's go. right. Ooh, yeah. gifts. Okay, there yeah. we go. Do we, do we have a sound See, for? Ding, I, ding, ding, I just ding, need ding. like a little bit of a prompt, and <laughs> yeah. then my brain's like, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. So, um, words of affirmation is just telling people what you yeah. know that they're doing a great, which you're doing a great job, by the way. Oh, so, thank you so if much. that's that your love language, really good. Yeah. then uh, <laughs> then that would be it. Um, physical touch, which is easy to figure that out. Uh, gifts, which you know, Tim, yours was acts of service. Acts of service. So when you do stuff for him, he appreciates it. That okay. type of thing. Of the five, which which are you and do you find you give and receive the same one or two? Um, so I definitely give. I'm a big gift giver. But I'm also um, maybe acts of service. That's things that I do for people in my life. Those are like, yeah. like those are my go-to. But I think for myself, I'm big on affirmations. But I'm also big on touch. And like I would say that touch... And time are and quality time are tied quality for a second. Time. Yeah. So they're different from like what I do and what I yeah. go to and what I want to receive, I think. Yeah. yeah. So if your significant other wanted to do something for you, them giving you words of affirmation would be number one in your books. Like if they came home and said, Great job of this or thank you for doing that, that type of mm, thing. See, I would probably rather the, get a gift yeah no i think just the act of service <laughs> like clean out the poop from the chicken coop like yeah. if he did that i'd be like big love eyes you okay. know like oh thanks or like he cleaned the litter box i'd be like yes i love you dude yeah. so, <laughs> so do you know his love language mm, yeah i think his would be definitely affirmation and probably i would say 
<laughs> not even acts of service because I think like I just I think they're just kind of routine things. So I don't even think that would be it. I would probably say mm, quality time or physical touch. Those are probably tied. Tied for a second. Yeah, probably. Probably more quality time, like off your phone kind of time, yeah. or like full, you know, being present in the moment. Yeah. yeah so if we, say, if we actually were to call him right now, mm -hmm. that's what he would say? Probably, but he's also on a train and you're not allowed to yeah, phone. You're not allowed to phone, not allowed to phone <laughs> on the what train, What if somebody's man? sleeping beside him? But yeah, we'll never know, right? They have cameras on those trains. <laughs> <laughs> but she said she sent pictures. She yeah. Sent pictures of people sleeping. After yeah. they get to their bunkhouse. Oh. A bunkhouse is where course. they sleep for the night. I could have pieced that together with bunk and house. <laughs> <laughs> But you, now you know what a railroader is. I, so I, Tim's I, learning things today. Yeah. Well, this is really good. Yeah. I, I kind of figured that's what it was, but I didn't want to make too many assumptions yeah. on that. At all. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> uh, let's get into some of the things you do for work. You said you work from home. Mm. Uh, what does your average day consist of? Yeah. Well, I also have an office in the city, but you know, if I can work from home, I will over like going into the city so i have an op an office at city hall and then i just work from home on the days that like i don't have any pressing meetings that i have to be in person i feel like since the pandemic happened a lot of things have just kind of shifted to virtual work anyways okay um for a lot of the people that i meet with so like anybody in the government really is like yeah. totally camera all that's all it is so i think for me a day would be answering a ton of emails in the beginning of my day that i'm like backlogged from the day before yeah um, and then just looking at what I have to do. So if we have a human rights committee council meeting coming up, then it's a ton of prep work. So it's either like soliciting and securing presentations from different organizations in the committee. So different newcomer groups or peace related or disability related or anything that would be like under the umbrella of human rights. So a lot of that, um, it would also be, you know, working with city clerks and um, getting our agendas ready for the upcoming meeting. All of them are live streamed. Yeah. And so there's tons of work that comes up, you know, leading up to that. We also have two subcommittees. So accessibility and inclusion subcommittee and the equity and diversity subcommittee so it's like and you're in charge of all of this? i'm in charge of all of that okay. yeah so it's like just navigating things that we have on the go so like we just passed a motion a little while ago to explore access to communication at the city which would be um you know ensuring that we have asl for example at every single meeting and yep. so or if the mayor does a public service announcement that there is asl incorporated into it as well because i don't know why that wasn't a thing yeah it's like like it's really strange, but it I always wasn't. remember it on like the TV in the yeah. bottom corner as yeah. a child. Like whenever they would do live broadcasts on like yeah. uh, the Weather Channel and stuff like that. Exactly. And they should be like that for like, you know, if there's like, especially if there's like an emergency or something, we don't even have that. Like it's just, yeah. it's mind boggling that it never existed. So like stuff like that or um, creating policies for newcomers and, you know, welcome and inclusion stuff. And yeah equity and diversity, different kind of things that we need to keep in line with. And so essentially my committee as whole is it acts as an advisory body to the mayor okay. and city council. So anything that would need me and the committee to, um, you know, provide recommendations, be it through research or, you know, citizen consultation, anything like that. So day to day is different depending on if we have a meeting coming up, if there's yep. monthly meetings, bi-monthly, but is this a new committee or is this something that's been around for a while? So I was originally, it was under Bowman's administration. So former okay. mayor, he was the one who struck it. It was in response to a McLean's article that listed Winnipeg as the most racist city in Canada. Yes, we all remember that. Um, right, that yeah. Was... And he was absolutely gutted over yeah. it. And so one of his, I guess, action items associated to it was to develop this human rights committee of council. Okay. And so none of, no other city in Canada has one. So okay. So there are a lot of uh, cities that are interested now. I've met with some from Toronto and, and Vancouver, I believe, and they're very interested in implementing something like it. Okay. Um, so basically, it, the, the beauty of this committee is that it reports through EPC, Executive Policy Committee, and Right to Council. So some ad hoc committees don't have 
much power. Like things can just meet and then they kind of just dissolve. Yep. Um, but this one just has a little bit more oomph behind it because of the reporting structure. So I think it was 2019 that it was started. I was actually an appointed citizen to the committee before. Okay. That's how it all started for me. Um, Bowman had appointed me as a citizen to it. And so I served as like, I think it was one year. Right. And how then, did you get to be the appointed citizen? Uh, well, you have to apply. Okay. And then uh, he just picks the ones that are, or there's a selections committee, I'm sure. Um, and the ones that, you know, have maybe a framework or a lens of human rights stuff. Um, Public he, speaking. Yeah. And just, you know, like for me, it was mental health and gender-based violence is kind of where I put my area into it. And so sat on it for a year. The coordinator retired, put my name in, and I was successful as a candidate. So um, I've been around since then. So it's, I think it's been like five years since it's been existing. So you've got to kind of excuse my ignorance on it because mm. I don't really know a lot about this. Yeah. About what you're what you're doing, anything like that. If you were to be in an elevator mm -hmm. and you're going to the 30th <laughs> floor of the of the building right now and you have to tell that person exactly what you do, what is that exactly? I would say that in like a very short way of saying it is I coordinate an advisory body that uh, provides ad well advisory uh, recommendations and references to the mayor and city council surrounding human rights law and best practices. Okay. That's that you would have that was good, right? had extra seconds to still talk and about then, anything else. Yeah, exactly. So this, <laughs> this question is going to be three. I feel like you've practiced that though. I have. And like I've given that answer probably. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So my question is threefold. Okay. Threefold. Uh, <laughs> why why do you believe what you do uh, is important? Okay. What are the challenges? And C, being that um, this is a number of years after that McLean's mm. article, is it meeting its objective. Ooh, good one. Okay. You might have to get me <laughs> reminded on the second and the third, but the first, the first point, um, I think for myself, um, coming from a family of immigrants too, and, you know, trying to, and having lived experience and watching things just kind of suck for certain Winnipeggers. Yeah. Um, so I think that that is the importance of, you know, people coming here, we're a melting pot of a city and a country, yeah. and realistically. Um, and that's just never going to change, I don't think. And so how can we make it um, easier for people to to navigate? And how can we, um, you know, make people who deserve, and this is just going beyond immigrants and, and newcomers, um, you know, people with mental illnesses or intellectual disabilities, how can we make it so that they don't have to ask for what they deserve, okay. right? Like, how can we just make things, I hate having to have somebody say like, oh, I need this requirement or, you know, like they shouldn't have to ask for us to come up with ASL when there's so many other things in the world that yeah. like they're handing out those kind of things. Like, it's just important. And ASL has been around for so long. It has. And like, right? so has deaf and hard of hearing people. Yeah. Like, it's not a new trend or, you know, big And it has nothing to do with ethnicity. It really doesn't. Really? Like, it, just, it could be anybody. Any Anybody. Yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, and there's a ton of, I have, I work with people and sit on my subcommittees that are deaf. And so they need it. Like they can't come to the meeting unless we have that. And they're some of our smartest and most contributing members. Yep. So we, we need those things for them. And so it's just a matter of looking at how I can make things in my, in my position, but also the, the human rights committee. And I think the beautiful thing about it is that it's people with lived experience. So whether it be personal or professional or a mix of both, um, like we have an individual who was homeless and he served on the committee for three years. Oh, and wow. so, you know, he's providing that kind of grassroots on the ground. Yeah. This is what we need. This is what works. This is what doesn't work. He now trains the police yeah. and um, paramedics on how to best communicate and how to, you know, navigate when working with unsheltered people. It's kind of like an insider. Yeah, exactly. Right? And that's what the Human Rights Committee is. It's built up with citizens. So all of the citizens come from different areas of, okay. of focus and passion. So some are like really involved in, you know, newcomer stuff. Some are involved in unsheltered communication. And so it's just, that is why I think it's so important because I don't really think that politicians have that, you know, idea of what the lived experience portion of it is. They can just do policy analyst and, you know, best practice from other places. But ultimately, it should be folks who have lived right. in yeah. that area to be able to shape things. So that was 
first part. Uh, the second part was what are the challenges that you face on a day to day basis in your job? Uh, I think the main one being that people sometimes think we're the Human Rights Commission. And so, like, they, like, have, like, human rights complaints for me. And I'm yep. like, man, like, that's so that not in my... Human yeah, rights. like, that's not in my wheelhouse. And especially, yeah. like, understanding the different jurisdictions between federal, provincial, and municipal. Municipal is much smaller than people tend to realize. It's yeah. like, I can't do anything about something that happened to you, like, on a provincial level. Or, you know, healthcare or education. People don't really know the difference of what is under what jurisdiction. Yeah. I would say that and then like getting some nasty emails every now and then. But like your thin, your skin gets thicker over time. Do you get emails about the potholes at all? No, but I hear about them a lot. Okay. I do. <laughs> and they suck. They really they do. do suck. They're awful. On the do you have here. any inside information on how to I get them none. fixed? Or... I got none. No? Honestly, like no. I'm at a point where I think we should just do it ourselves. <laughs> you know, just go <laughs> Well, Willie start. Jefferson was out there the other day with Scott Gillingham was fixing uh, potholes. That's hilarious, but I'm, you know, Scott <laughs> is actually really good for, for everything that, like, is pretty, like, tangible steps instead of, like, we're going to make this and that and these big yeah. ideas. He's really good for, like, we have really bad potholes and a lot of homeless people, so, like, let's do things let's to fix that. that. Yeah, so I really like that. Um, other challenges would be myself being having to remain neutral, yeah. right, because I'm a coordinator. I have lost my voting privileges as I used to be on the committee and I was very vocal. <laughs> yep. I'm always very vocal on these things and so I'm a, a neutral party now. And that for me is Are difficult. you like a moderator of the committee then, would you kind say? Kind of, yeah. Like I don't have a vote, but I also can't, like if somebody brings forward something that I'm not necessarily in alignment with, yeah. I don't really get to say that because it's not... Yeah. Like I can tell them this may not be good for the city or this right. may be good for the city, but at the end of the day, it's not up to me to make those decisions. So I think being neutral is hard because I do have a lot of firm beliefs in things, and yeah. so it it's gets your, tricky. You're more coordinate, coordinator instead of a somebody who steers people. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, I can provide advice, but that advice needs to be nonpartisan and neutral right. again. Okay. And then third, I think we're doing all right. <laughs> in terms of since the McLean, since that's the, the, McLean's the third article, question was the McLean's on article. On paper, anyways, yeah, are, right. Like I don't know necessarily if there's been a big societal shift or um, shift in discourse or maybe like beliefs, but I do think if you look at what we've done in on paper of all the things that we've done, I think you can be like check like it checks all the boxes for things that there's been like active attempts to yeah. you know educate and create awareness and create policies that would help people in you know equity diversity inclusion or whatever it may be yeah. so on paper totally but i mean in terms of forever going to be able to shift people's brains i think it's going to take a lot more than yeah. anything a city could do you're doing everything you can <laughs> yeah whether yeah. that's making a change as a whole you don't know. we don't know <laughs> so they used to do a ceo sleep out Mm. Do you remember that? The camp out that they would do, Port Germain, mm -hmm. the I guess like all these people that were part of big business would sleep on the streets for a yeah. couple nights. Do they do that anymore? I don't think so. No? Um, was that a city initiative back in the day? I can't remember. I remember it when I was doing my undergraduate degree. So that's what I remember it from. And so I graduated in 2018. So I think it was like 2016 the last they stopped time stopped it like by covid yeah like i can see them not doing that because of covid and then just never getting back to it like yeah, a lot of stuff like a lot world. of stuff <laughs> yeah <laughs> we salads just... at mcdonald's anyway salads at McDonald's? <laughs> yeah they stopped it they don't exist anymore they, no they don't and that was uh because they wanted to mainstream the uh menu items because oh. of covid right and then, mm -hmm. and then they just, just never they came just back never came back but wendy's has wow. better salads anyway. or free or yeah, they have. They That's do. true. Yeah. Or free refills. My coffee at McDonald's, that too. What? Really? Yeah. I think it's just your McDonald's. Nope. I think they do free refills. They do not. No? Nope. Do you do have anymore. your own McDonald's? Is that... He has a McDonald's. <laughs> oh, okay. Where he McDonald's. sits and he reads the newspaper. Oh, you're no, one no. of those. So, listen. <laughs> hey, so I, I, listen, no, no, he no, says. No, just no, listen. I, 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 used Gets to a love, I used to love sitting down at McDonald's. Just whatever, just taking my time, having yeah. my chill time and getting my refill. There you go. Okay. And so what happened was we went uh, during COVID, we went to Florida mm. and we had to quarantine for two weeks. Oh, yeah. And so I got out of the habit of going to McDonald's and making it in my house. That plus the fact that I can't get free refills 
means I have completely transitioned. I don't have nearly as much time sitting at a McDonald's. Hmm. Yeah. How do you, you feel about it? Um, just changed. Yeah. Should I be on a couch right now? <laughs> you are. How do you feel about that? Yeah. And how, how does that I like this? Feel? I like how, I like how this is going. <laughs> Can we dive a little bit into Tim's yeah. psyche Can we a little pull bit? That apart a little bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I totally sidetracked that whole conversation, but I'm not sure what I went on from that. <laughs> <laughs> And they have relaunched it in 2019, and then it stopped during COVID. Yeah. Okay, so we got that makes sense, yeah, right? It does. Like, yeah. I feel like a lot of those things kind of ended. For they went back to the CEOs and said, "Should we start this again?" Yeah. I don't know like, if uh, people I don't won't know if even I'm remember. Ready to do that? <laughs> Can I do again? it virtually? <laughs> <laughs> then no. <nope>. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's yeah. kind of become virtual, though. It really has, right? So it you really said has. you work from home today. Do you work yeah. from home all the time, or is it just as much as possible? Yeah. Yeah, as much as possible. Like, Did you work from home before COVID? Um, it's very much so a hybrid approach. Okay. So I think like I was totally in a lot more and it's really hard to even remember, honestly, but I was saying this the other day to my friends. I was like, dude, I went to meetings all the time in person. Like how exhausting was that? Like I yeah. would have like a 9 a.m. and then a 10 a.m. And, and it was like driving to the next place, driving to the next place, like so many coffees because you would have one at every meeting. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, how did I do that? Like now everybody's just at home like, hello, nice to see you. Thanks for meeting me. You know, Just like, think about the generation before you that went to meetings and drank. Oh my gosh. Oh and think God. about how much they drank during those meetings. I can't these people. Even. Um, generation before us. Generation Were you before Rus- us. Is this Russian meetings? <laughs> no. But yeah. like, honestly, yeah. I, I worked in a place. Portuguese I won't, meetings. I yeah, won't name this go. place, but I worked in a place back in 2009, 2009, 2010, just for like six months. And there was a liquor cabinet in the bullpen. Mm, okay. Like, there, there was alcohol during the day in the office i don't know if that happens anymore it might i don't work there anymore but it was very um like uh what's that what's that tv show called uh where they're the ad agency suits no Uh, that's a lawyer mad men Men. okay very much like a madman type of mentality right where it's Mm. all old school they're all drinking their whiskey out of their glass big exact guys really yeah have that yeah now I it's have coffee. seen some of that, but it's usually like, like I worked in the hospitality industry growing up and like to pay for university, it was all hospitality industry. And I find that like the big owners or like whatever, the managers, GMs, they would go and get to like have a glass of whatever, whiskey, wine, whatever yeah. it may be with like whoever they were working with or like if they wanted them to land like a big event there or something that like they would always be having it. Yeah. But also like servers and bartenders, like we would get to have them after hours. So yeah. I know that there's a lot of places that like would drink on the job. Yep. I could never do that. Like I, even if I was allowed to do that, if I could never do that. If you were just a couple of years older, you'd be able to. Yeah. But um, at the then time, the rules all changed. then we all just like afterwards, especially if we had to like come up with our own menus, like specialty drink menus and stuff. Yep. And I would totally, we would drink them all after. Right. Like So you like, bartended then? Mm-hmm, okay. Yeah. Where'd you bartend? If you well, don't I, mind yeah, sharing no, that. Yeah, no. I bartended at the Manitoba Club. Uh, are you familiar with that? It's on the Broadway. It's a members only club. Is that where we went? Yeah, we went there actually yeah. uh, for a birthday party. Yeah. And then we snuck into the mm-hmm. lower level where all the uh, racquetball and squash. No, that's the racket. Oh, so then we didn't go there. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, we only. did. We did sneak into the members only area though. <laughs> it's very. Uh, it's very prestige. Okay. Um. Then so, we wouldn't be allowed in. There. Yeah. I also bartended <laughs> at like. A little bit of time. It's also like you can't even wear jeans, man. Like, oh, really? Like, if somebody wore jeans, we would have to tell them you can't, you can't wear that here. What if it was like <laughs> Sam Cates? Um, yeah, he wouldn't wear them, I don't think. But no? um, like, I'm pretty sure he went there. Like, I'm pretty sure everybody went there. And the thing for me was, like I said, I don't know names. Like as I mentioned, like I could meet somebody over and over, and I'm just trash at remembering names. Yeah. But the thing about this place is you have to know their names. Like, it was so faux pas to be like, and what's your name? Because you just, they just pay their bill at the end of the year or like end of the month, whichever. Okay. And you just type it on their account and then they just, it goes 
goes to their account. So like you have to address them by their name. But I'd be like freaking out like, oh my God, who's that guy? And like yeah. you have to get the right name. You can't charge a bunch of So you of ask food. your I'd fellow. ask my friend and like there's like little pictures of them on some of them on the oh. machine. And I'm like looking at them, looking back at the guy, looking at him like I think that's him. So it was honestly <laughs> stressful for me. So you just charge it to Sam Cates account. Yeah, and I'm like, all right, there you go, Mr. Cates. <laughs> so as a bartender, I have to ask this question. Um, did you find you had to, and I know you're getting into some therapy and consulting mm-hmm. now. Did you find you had to be a junior psychologist and therapist as a bartender? Mm, that's a great question. I think I was like that for like all the hospitality industry, like serving too, because you get your regulars and like they would just come in to chat with you. Like I also served at Alto's Buffet. That was my first serving job. And like the regulars always come for the buffet. So Breakfast or dinner? Mm, Sunday is after churchgoers. It's older. It's like a little bit elderly group. Yeah, they have the free ice cream at that the, time. Yeah, they're super sweet. And then like the Friday night was the seafood buffet. So it's like, you know. They just brought the buffets back there. Really? Yeah. What were they doing without it? That's like their thing. Like, yeah. They're so good. Their breakfast buffet is really good. We go on Saturdays once a month. It's so mm. it, and it used to be better. I, I yeah. find it to be good because the coffee is <laughs> unlimited. Yeah, you have nothing to compare it to. And I have nothing yeah. to compare it it's to. It's all been downgraded. Okay, bit, yeah. well, yeah, that's true. The ice cream machine sometimes gets left on from oh. the Friday night. Wow. So, so you get... So some of us will... Three, we'll, three people we'll, out of the eight will get we'll, it. We'll, we'll just we'll shut just, it down. Why are you getting your ice cream <laughs> well, at eight in the morning? <laughs> <laughs> it's um, 10 in the morning. We'll just try it just to see if it works. And if it works, works... Oh, my God, it works. Tell yeah. everyone. Yeah, we <laughs> tell everyone until until Matthew gets up there and then gets turned off. <laughs> He's very loud about it. Yeah, because he tells everybody. Everybody get the ice cream. <laughs> it's ice cream here. <laughs> So do you find that you – I know we asked the question. I don't think you've gotten to it. Um, <laughs> we just interrupt. Do you find that you became that kind of – Yeah, but I also find like that they wanted to be so for me as well. Okay. Like sometimes you're just like cleaning up bar and like, you know, doing your due diligence and they'd be like, so how's school? Or like, you know, and so yeah. tell me about that. Like what is it bothering you? And so like I think it was very mutual. Um, so I wonder if she served us like, one time. It would be back and do that. forth. Do you guys do that? Years. We do that, yeah. <laughs> well, we're older. Yeah, like right? I was going to say it's kind of, you know, you get to a certain age and then they care more about yeah. talking about themselves. Like it just kind of Well, we go for wings and then like uh, one of the guys that we hang out with, Matthew, will literally just talk to the waitress the whole time mm. yeah. Yeah. and find out her life story, yeah. why she's <laughs> doing this, yeah. where she's going from here, mm. like her motivations. Like she'll just literally need to like pry herself away. Yeah, like right? that, I've had so that. So guys yeah. do that to you. Yeah. Totally. It's a dad thing. I've I've noticed it's very much so a dad thing. And they're like, oh, well, my daughter went to something like that a long time ago as well. Like you're just relating it to different yeah. things. Yeah, now we know. It's but they thing. also, it's a dad thing. That's they why. also really want to help. Like they just want to be like, well, don't worry about that assignment. You're going to do great. You <laughs> oh, know? forget it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just be like study. a pseudo. Why, why try? You're yeah. fine. <laughs> uh, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> they just don't want to lose you as their waitress because they're like, this person takes good care of us. We don't have to <laughs> worry about stuff <laughs> our food is hot mm-hmm. you know like all that kind of yeah, stuff yeah drinks are when refilled. you get a good waitress you go back to those places and you, you probably had your regulars all the time all the time and you go back to those places because you know the service is going to be what you want oh totally i would like i sometimes i don't go back to a restaurant if it was like crappy service like it, yeah. it gives you a bad taste in your mouth right if you go to a place and you're like food is great service sucked yeah. so then you just like kind of avoid it so from a female point of view then because you're not a dad, you're <laughs> younger. You um, do you pick restaurants based on your servers? Uh, sometimes it depends on. See, it depends on my social battery. Like if yeah. I have one that's like kind of all up in your face, then I'm like, man, she, are, yeah. you know, like some they just check on you like every time you put a bite of food in your, you know, in your <laughs> mouth, and you're like, oh yeah, everything's good. I just told you, like one of those. I'm like, ah, they're pushy, dude. Yeah. But then like some of the other ones, I'm like, I really like it. They kind of just like give you your stuff, and then like screw off. And like I'm a kind of okay with that too. Yeah, so, as long as your drinks full. Yeah, and... as long as we're taken care of, and like my food's there at a good time. Yeah. Whatever. Always get that line. How how do your first few bites taste? Yeah. 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 And I'm always like, I haven't actually had a bite yet. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, wow. Oh I'm, my God. Five minutes have passed and I still yeah. haven't had a bite. I'm sorry. I'm just waiting till everybody gets their food. <laughs> yeah. Literally. <laughs> yeah. So we go, we go once a month for a guy's breakfast at Alto's. Okay. Yeah, so. I like that. 
I've well, never heard of Guy's Saturday, Breakfast before. Yeah. Well, you're not up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that would make sense. But, but as girls, you guys do like girl spa dates or girls. Do you do girl spa dates? No. 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 no? I've no. never done that. I just took my partner to Elkhorn Resort. Hey, yeah. Uh, yeah, That's where have... my timeshare is. Is it? Yeah. Okay. That would be a <laughs> it's crazy all cool full circle. Hey, that would be a very cool one. I would be cool with that one because they have the Nordic Spa now. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, how like, was it? It was incredible. C- compared to the Thermia, I need to know. Night and day. Night and day. Because Thermia is like so packed. Really? We're like We also went on a Wednesday, mind yeah. you. But still, Wednesday at Thermia is going to be packed. Like it's just... It's, Whereas Elkhorn's not going to be packed No, at it's yeah. not. There's just like a couple people. How was it for service there? Uh, well, they have that bar that's on like the spa side. That one was a little much with like the in your face kind of thing. Okay. Um, but it was incredible. Like we had a charcuterie they had a lot of board. Staff. Yeah. Oh yeah. We had a charcuterie board, and it's like that's all we wanted for during the day. I had a couple drinks, went in the spa, then yeah. we went to like the Buffalo Bar for the evening, and like had a nice dinner there. But I thought it was like amazing. Like it was so perfect. That's where we went for his birthday, and it was like so good that I would have stayed two nights rather than one night. Yeah. So you stayed right in the hotel area then? Uh, Yeah, we did a hotel uh, stay, like not the chalets, but um, my friends and I were talking about it. We might do that this summer. Because they... Summer's busy. Yeah. Is it really It will be way busier in the summer. Yeah. Yep. The, um, so that's where we, I get my week and the, him and... So me and the guy that talks to all the waitresses, (laughs) we go for the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, because they can only go Thursday through Sunday, right? Okay. So we go the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and we'll go and we'll book massages and we'll... At the spa? At the spa. Well, the the old spa. Okay, I didn't know there was one. Because it's still there. And we actually both work from home. Mm -hmm. So we bring our computers out there and we connect and we just do our work and we'll... Like there's a long table in the chalet, right? So he's yeah. at one end, I'm at the other. We're both working. We take phone calls. We go into the other room, take phone calls and all that kind of stuff. And then what we'll do is like we'll go out for dinner and we'll do all the things that uh, are great about his timeshare. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and the the pool actually has an outdoor hot tub okay. in the regular pool. Yeah. Like and- I, I really like the, the Nordic spa vibe there because they have like... They have two hot areas. So they have like the steam area and then they also have the hot sauna and they okay. have like exfoliation areas and they do that thermia too, but it's like this is is it thermia or thermia, by the way? Therm- I don't know. Thermia. Thermia? Thermia, I'm pretty sure. Thermia or thermia. Thermia. I guess and, it depends if you want to be like high end, it's thermia. Like, ther- it depends on who I'm talking to. Yeah. Like I'll whip out the thermia if it's like colleagues at work with my girlfriends. Like, yeah, I want to thermia today. Like a little bit less classy. Yeah. But yeah, no, that's a killer spot. It'll yeah. be way better with your timeshare the, now. Yeah. The only one that's the only my the only thing I don't like about um what that I, I prefer at thermia is they have the off gas. I love the off. Okay, the ceremony. Yeah, where they do all the yeah. towels and yeah. it gets really, really hot. Mm-hmm. I do that every hour and they don't have that one of those. At, okay, uh, that's at true. I love that. Mm-hmm. I've told the story a couple of times, but one time, like we do every <laughs> time we go there, we, we go there six times, like every hour. And one time, and I told you this story before, yep. but uh, Patrick Line. Okay. And who was our running back uh, for the Bombers? Um, Harris. Harris. Uh, Andrew Harris were in the same okay. off goss as me. <laughs> and Patrick Line. And they're naked, right? No, they're not naked. Oh. You don't, have you been to the off glass? <laughs> yes, I have. Okay. It's incredibly so you, hot. So you know yes. they're not naked. No, they're not naked. They're not naked. That would be and wild. And you need a towel. <laughs> yeah. I thought this was the men's well, breakfast version. It's fine, wild. But, um, and, and Patrick Line, and, and I think uh, it's a it's Finnish or it's fin- like uh, Thermia it's, is a... It's, it's a Scandinavian. It's like, Scandinavian, right? So it's yeah. from his country. Yeah. And he should know the rules. He wouldn't shut up the entire time. No. You're not supposed to talk. And Patrick Line would not shut up. Wow. Yeah. Um, so that's an actually interesting point because Thermia has like a shush policy, yes. yeah. whereas the one at Elkhorn has a no shush policy. Right. So you can talk there. You can talk there. And there's also music playing outside, which is like kind of this okay. sounds fun, actually. Which, which they can do if there's less people. Yeah, they right. can do. Like there was a really chatty guy in the, in like the cold the pol- Dad? The cold plunge. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> I don't know, but he was like, so. But I'm like just in the cold plunge, like trying to get my breathing regulated yeah. and like get into the zone. He's yeah. like, so if you could pick any drink in the world right now, I'm like, dude. It wasn't Tim? <laughs> yeah, he's like, what would That sounds like a question that you would ask. like, like vodka. Uh, yeah. and what like was the answer? coffee what was the answer? i said none in here yeah. but like in the hot tub yeah. maybe i would do like a beer or a cocktail but like in the cold plunge i'm not chilling in there for long 
Like I'm not going to be in there to have a drink. Yeah. It's just like a like I have my moment and then I get out. While that guy's talking to you. He talked to me so much. And was my, he just hanging out in there? Like, my was partner that... said like, man, I see that guy everywhere around here. And then he went into the <laughs> change room and he's like, oh, hey, man. And we're like, uh, he was there too. But there were only five people in the whole spa. Mm-hmm. So. There was like, a, there was, I would say like a dozen. Okay. Okay. A dozen. And like that was, that was like okay for me. Like it was, I feel like it's bigger too. Yeah. Like a more real estate in terms of So was this recently? Around. Like in the last couple like of weeks? This week. Or... Oh, like I went okay. on Wednesday. Oh, wow. Yeah. It was awesome. Only like a dozen people. That sounds and fantastic. Lorraine, do you want to do specials. that? Yeah. They do have yeah. good specials. Yeah. During the week, if you ever go, they have good specials uh, for the week. Yeah. On Wednesdays, they have wings. Wing oh. special on Wednesday. No, they don't. Yes, they do. Do they? Yes. Still? Yes. All the wing specials are gone or they're like a dollar. Well, no, they're just oh, more expensive. Oh, I know. They're so crazy. Have you, like, we, we've checked into all of them now and it's like three times the cost yeah like you just need to do them at home now like yeah we do i was them thinking the home. same thing we i'm gonna do do start doing my air fryer yeah we do like a big people. costco pack that's not do... the same you can't talk about as... what the waitress is doing yeah that's true you can't ask the waitress how their life yeah. is right and that's kind of the shtick yeah but we do them at home we even cut up like celery and carrots that oh, no one wow. eats <laughs> you go all out <laughs> yeah like just to... you have baskets and everything there you go yeah i ordered them off amazon how much is per wing at your place Mm, I thought you were going to say you stole them from Smitty's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I ordered them off Amazon. <laughs> but we get like these like big packs from Costco. It's like 27 bucks. Yeah. And it's like huge. Yeah. And we do like three different flavors and drink yeah, beer. start doing that now. We'll just do wing nights in my house. Yes. Okay. You should. Yeah. Let's it's do a good it. time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Great maybe idea. you can hire somebody to come for an hour, and they can pretend. Yeah. They can pretend that they are a server, so you can ask them how they're. Would doing. you? Would you be my server? <laughs> Yeah, oh, exactly, right? Would it just be going from... Okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Gifts, Tim. Acts. Gifts Acts and, and service. Acts service. Here's a wing. Here's some money. <laughs> <laughs> Goods and services. So uh, I want to talk about your um, your counseling. Mm-hmm. Because is this something new? Yes. Or this is something new? Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've seen kind of your posts and stuff like that about your counseling and... Is this, um, do you host this out of home as well? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what made you want to get into counseling? Well, I think initially, like I have lived with mental illness and mental health problems all my life. Um, it was way more predominant when I was young, like 14 to like 19 ish was like okay. rough go, but now it's a lot different. But I under, I remember how hard it was to try and navigate finding a resource that was like one, you don't have to wait for like five months to get into because typically when people are seeking help, it should be like because they're at that point where they need yeah. help. Um, and then also super expensive. And a lot of the times I would like meet with like these old men therapists and like they would always like, I picture this one dude, he had like a British accent and he was in my mom's, uh, EAP system at work. So it was like somebody that she could access for cheap, I guess. Yeah. But like, I just never connected with any of these people. And like, I was young. And so I'm like, we need more young counselors that are like, make kids feel okay and make, well, just like younger adults feel okay with going there and not like scared to talk about something because they'd be judged by this person and so I don't know I think it's just a mixture of all those things having that sympathetic life uh, experience and then also all those factors of it's so expensive you can never get anywhere yeah and wanting to have that relation with them like being able to relate on like a a regular level like I would like that peer connection you know so I think that's kind of where it started Okay. Yeah. I, yeah, I would say that's pretty important, especially considering coming out of COVID. Uh, yeah. The youth, I think that some of the numbers that are coming out are staggering. Yeah. And like you said, it's talking to someone of your age group yeah. instead of someone who's, you know, 50, 60 years yeah, old. Yeah, exactly. Really has a, that, that kind of connection. So are you so. trying to um, gain a lot of people from your age or are you open to like, like, 80 to to 15 like what what are you looking at so in terms I'm, of counseling I'm open to whatever like I I do it out of my home I offer virtual and in person okay so I do like to gauge the person first you know like I don't want to just bring somebody to my home I just like make sure that you're a fit yeah and make sure that we're a fit so I'll do a virtual um check-in because I don't want to bring a stranger over either so I like to you know have that kind of first connection to vet individuals because yeah. you make a business online and anybody can show up to your house yeah. but um i i make it open for anybody but i've noticed that the biggest need and like my highest 
um, reach out is young girls. So like 16 to 18 year old okay. girls is like the the prime age. And it's either them reaching out or like a lot of it's their moms like reaching out on their behalf and then yep. liaising it through there. But it's like it's just like hard knock time for those those kids, you know. Yeah. So that would primarily be who I see right now. The cell phone culture, the TikTok. screen culture, like TikTok. TikTok is a big one. Yeah. The, I have the two The addictiveness sisters. of yeah. everything, right? I have two younger sisters and like I worry about it, but they're they're really like they are so much more advanced than I, I give them credit for because I'm just like worried about everything for them when I see things. But they are like totally on their game. But I, I think a lot of that the way that social media has kind of become right now and yeah. and is for for young girls there's so much pressure and like everything is a highlight reel right like everything yeah. like people are comparing themselves to things that don't actually exist yeah. everything you post online is a highlight reel it's not someone's reality yeah and like a lot of glamorization of mental illness even i found like people are like i have this and i have that and talking about it i'm like everybody's so hard done by right now on certain things and so it's just it's a really negative space to be in yeah yeah so with um with mental illness then do you find that people that are coming to you have you know anxiety and stress and all this stuff because of like we're on on our phones we're on our screens we're on tv like we're watching all this stuff all the time but do you also think that they're coming to you with it because their friend Mm. also has yeah the same thing i've seen a lot of that um and i see a lot of it happen like more so right now it's the parents that are like my kid needs to talk to somebody yeah. and that's mostly what it is like parents being spokesperson for their kid because they're maybe their kid is not acknowledging um that something is going on because of their friend group or because of you know social trends that are happening right now so like maybe like a form of behavior or something that they're doing or a personality trait that they've kind of absorbed. Um, they don't realize that it's because of their friend group and your social circle, but their parents surely have. And so their parents have reached out as an advocate on on behalf okay. of them, like in an alarming sense of way. And, and I think it's really nice though, because a lot of, so far anyways, I've had parents who are very like, you like, this is their thing. Like, I'm not, you know, like, don't tell me everything that, like has and been you said. can't right you can't yeah like unless it's like something alarming like they're yeah. at harm or someone else is at harm anything like that you have to yeah. duty to report but for the most part it's like totally respecting everybody's um time and i like that a lot i haven't had a situation where a parent has come to me and been like so like what's going on in their life like, yeah. you know um so i think that that's really nice too for for the kids to be able to trust me yeah. and be able to speak their full truth and and everything else right yeah. Do, you, do you find that you act as a sounding board more than anything else when getting the kids to open up about what they're feeling and, and just kind of giving it back to them what you hear? Or do you give people strategies? You said the 16 to 18 year old. Mm -hmm. And I have uh, three daughters, uh, 18, 19, 20. So okay. we're just kind of going through that, mm. just past that. Yeah. Do you find that's what you act more as, that sounding board? It depends on the situation and like there's a bunch of different techniques or theories that you can use and so like person-centered theory is basically the notion of believing that every individual has the resources within them to navigate it so that you don't give them this is what you're going to do, this is the next step. It's helping them kind of discover that they have the strength and the resources within them and how to best utilize them. Um, and I find that happens a lot in this age group but also looking at um, solution focused therapy is my favorite because like it's, it looks at here's a problem how can we fix it but without telling them this is what you need to do to fix it it's, yeah because they won't listen they won't yeah. gotta work together to we figure teenagers. out ways that work and make it happen right yeah so that one is strength based which is like words of affirmation you're good at this you're like amazing at this you got all these things going on like don't think this or that or X, Y, Z because we're looking at words of affirmation, which is strength-based, acknowledging their strengths that they have and, yeah. and building off of that. So I, I picture a counseling session, therapist session, all these kinds of things where you, you sit on your chair like that mm -hmm. and I lay on a couch like this and you ask a question and I talk through my problems and you make notes for a little bit and then you say, ding, time's up. 
-hmm. That's my perception of what therapy. I've never been to a therapy okay. session. I only see what I see on TV. Yeah. That type of thing, right? <laughs> when I when I see them talking, I see him sitting on a chair and I see somebody laying on a couch. Okay, yeah. Do you is your sessions more of you asking a question and them talking or do you guys talk through things? Um, it depends on the person. I find that the older the individual, it's more of a communication, like it's more back and forth, the older the individual because they're like I know what you're doing, you yeah. know, like, I'm not going to come here to talk. I know, like, I, like a lot of yeah. them, too, like, they're, like, people come in there expecting you to solve their problems, and that's just what, and the idea of counseling is, and that's not necessarily what we do. We just provide you with, you know, tools and guidance and resources to be able to yeah. help you do it yourself and empower you to do it yourself and support you through the way, and so, um, for me, it's very, like, laid back. Uh, they come into the house, I ask them if they want a water, tea, diet, Pepsi, you know, the kind of... You this, get all the things. This, the, all of it, Glass yeah. of whiskey? Yeah, no, not no? for them. Especially the minors, it's a bad <laughs> touch, you know? Yeah, minors who are dealing with depression anxiety. <laughs> yeah, That's you guys want to... It's not all minors. She said some of the older people <laughs> want to communicate. <laughs> so I figured I would check. Frank's full of great ideas. Maybe he should go to therapy. Yeah, how's your, how's your know. Thursday? This is my therapy. Yeah. <laughs> this we, We've talked about this on the podcast. This is my therapy. Yeah. Me talking with Tim weekly or talking with a guest weekly because when, sometimes we don't have guests. So sometimes we just talk to each other. And, yeah. And absolutely. it's my therapy. Like it's my way of talking about what's on my mind, what, you know, things that I want to get better huge. at. That's huge. It right? really is. A lot of the times people just come to talk. Like not everybody's got a problem and yeah. when they see a counselor. They just need an outlet to talk to. And so like sometimes their parents are not that vibe for them. And like a lot of the times people don't come with like a slew of issues or things they need to talk about. It's like they just want to talk about their week and like, yeah. debrief. And it's just like a really good place to do that. So sometimes it's simplistic. Sometimes people are just lonely. Yeah, exactly. And that's totally it. And like if, if that's what you need, then it's what you need, right? Yeah, fantastic. I have a – I'm going to move on to something else in a second. Oh. In a second. Okay. However, okay. I'd like to just to stop because I want you to tell us about your tattoos. Okay. Because they, they look really cool. Oh, thank you. Uh, well, I have a ton, <laughs> uh, like literally a ton. So this sleeve goes all the way up to here. And then this one has a little break. I actually just got a little guy long the other day, a chickadee. But it needs to be filled in. But I do have almost two sleeves. I got... I start my first ever tattoo is in like some gross house that I got when I was 16. That one's on my back. It's very, it's well, it's non legible at this point. It just looks so like a 16 mush. year old getting a tattoo. Yeah. Probably not the best. No. And you it wouldn't was like suggest that inspirational. Anymore? Like it was like turn. Well, and the funny thing is, my mom has it too. Okay. And like for my mom, this makes sense. Like it's turn your wounds into wisdom. Like she's lived, you know, like, okay. but at 16, what wounds? What wounds did will you I have? be transforming into wisdom at that age? So I got that but it was after I got sick like mentally mentally unwell that I started getting more tattoos they all have some sort of significant meaning to me like I have a Ganesh up here which is a type of god I have tons of different spirituality tattoos so okay. looking at all different faith-based stuff and like I'm a Christian myself but I have you know Buddha here or I have um, some Hinduism here and then I have um, just tons of different kind of aspects. And Are I you think, just trying to check off all the boxes yeah, just in case? Yeah, pretty much, just in case. <laughs> and like, and like, crap, I'm missing one. I better <laughs> chisel that guy in here. But I think for me, it was just looking at a higher power. And yeah. so in a place that I really needed. Gives you a reminder yeah, when you look at it. And I needed a, a, to know that there was a higher power um, at a certain point. And so kind of all just stemmed from there. I got like my mom, like the traditional heart the tattoo, but yep. not... It's like mom and it's an actual heart because That's she's cool. a paramedic yeah. and oh, then okay. worked in cardiology. So like just a bunch of different things. This is supposed to be my mom too because she's wise. You got an owl. I also have an owl. Do you? Yep. Does it look I have a like giant this? owl though. It's on my whole shoulder. Okay, nice. Yeah. Owls are dope. They are. Yeah. I really love cool. owls. Yeah, so I have a bunch of different stuff. They're I got a dragon here. They're a hoot. Okay, okay, that was really good. <laughs> I have a dragon. Um, a I have dragon. just some. I have lots of quotes um, that I've gotten over time that like seemingly mean less. Do you over go to time. the same artist every time? No, no. I will the now. Same dingy basement. 
Yeah, I will well, now. Obviously not that artist. God, no. I don't even know that dude's name. Like, it was just like, what? Ugh, it's bad. The but, old yellow um, pages. Let's see. Yeah, exactly. Craigslist. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I go to somebody now who I'll, I'll stay with her for like ever. Her name is Crystal and she's incredible. Um, and I'll stay with her for the rest of my, my tattooing days. Do you draw any of your own? No, I don't. Okay, so you're not like an artist that draws her tattoos and then get somebody else to put Mine it on? Mine would be so bad if I did yeah. it. A little stick finger. <laughs> oh, it would be do so gross. Do this way better. Yeah, do this, but like, good. You know what's funny? We were in Florida and uh, Tim got a tattoo, his first tattoo in Florida. Okay. Tim, you want to show your it's, giant it's, tattoo? It's, it's, fair. it's not very good. I've noticed it. Yeah. <laughs> I did notice it. It's not huge, but yeah. good for you. But uh, <laughs> so we went and one of the guys has a lot of tattoos and he wanted everybody to get tattoos. So three people, I think, in total got we tattoos were just at, out of the eight Yeah, we people. were at, out for supper at the Hooters in Cl- Clearwater. Yeah, the okay, reputable yeah. establishment and he's like, in Clearwater. You guys, <laughs> let's, let's go get tattoos. Like, we're never going to find a place to get tattoos, Steve. And he's like, he calls him, oh, we're going for tattoos. So we went for Because this place just takes walk-ins and it was okay. open until so four decided, in the morning. We just went. See, that's rare. Oh, four in the morning. Four in the morning. Wow. And it was right next to a bar that we yeah. mm. really didn't fit into. But um, <laughs> it, <was good> <laughs> yeah, it, but the, it sounds like it. <laughs> but the tattoo place, what I was going to say is like they have like clip art on the wall. Oh, yeah. So like they have like this like thing of art and it's like it's $25 per piece. Oh. So there's people coming in from the bar. And literally going, I want that one, that one, that one, and that one. And they'd come in, and then the guy would put it on wherever they wanted on their body. Yeah. And it was just, like, literally, like, stick figures and, and like, peace oh, yeah. signs and like stuff like that. Like, just little dinky, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So, and I think that's becoming something that's uh, popular right now. I don't know. I've seen a lot it of TikToks is. about it and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Where it's not really art anymore. It's just, like, it's like, line drawings. Yeah, line drawings and, like, a lot of them. To yeah. Like make up a, I forget what it's, it's like patchwork. That's like, is that what it's called? called? Yeah. Okay. And I'm like, see, for me, I had to, I couldn't stand that. Like, I had to fill in because yeah. I didn't like that. It you was wanted like a whole all piece. All this disconnection, you know? Yeah. It's funny you mentioned that your tattoos have, obviously, most people get tattoos mm-hmm. because they have some level of significance to them. So when we went to Florida, um, our buddy Steve got the largest tattoo. And then I got a tiny tattoo. My brother in law actually got a tattoo on the inside of his bicep that said blessed. Okay. And I had a fishing hook, and it was for my uh, my father in law passed away a year mm. and a half ago, and and they were very close, and that was his way of um, honoring him that. after Super nice. uh, he had passed. And we we actually uh, two days later went for ice cream at a place, and he was telling the story to a group of ladies who had come down from another state and were getting tattoos because their family member had just passed. And they oh. were all getting tattoos wow. to honor her. It was crazy that he was telling the story. And that's and why this, they were there. And that's why they're there walking into this tattoo. Yeah. That uh, is interesting. I like place. that, though. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was, it was crazy. But yeah. thanks for sharing about that. Yeah, absolutely. I was just watching the, the whole time asking questions. Like, what we had to ask about Yeah, that. I know, for sure. <laughs> uh, transitioning. Um, well, I wanted to kind of relate your counseling mm-hmm. to the podcast that's coming up. Yep. You guys have um, released a whole bunch of like workbooks and digital media. Yeah. I, I think that's what, uh, I think what that's it's what it, if that, basically If Jasmine called it that, then I would go with that's that. What it is. Uh, yeah. That's what I'm calling it. Okay. So <laughs> digital media and stuff that you're putting out there right now. The podcast hasn't come out yet. Mm-hmm. Is the podcast something that is born out of the counseling or is it two separate things that like was the podcast always going to be something that it has morphed into or was it started yeah, so as an it, idea of something else? The podcast was the initial, right? Like that was like number one, what we were wanting to do. Yeah. Um, I think we both always just wanted to do a podcast and then we became friends and we're like, we both do public speaking and we both think we're really funny yep. and like relatable and stuff. And so we're like, this would be the perfect space. We have the, we have the outreach. We have like, you know, all that kind of stuff. Yep. Imagine if we combined forces and we did. And then we're like, dude, we have so much to offer. Like we have so many ways to offer and it doesn't want to be like, I don't want it just to be this one facet. Yeah. So we came up with, you know, the online. So we have coaching, we have the workbooks, um, we can do presentations. There's so many different things that we have online courses yeah. Um, because we just want to be able to have so many different offerings. And like the podcast ultimately is now this smaller thing, even though we like our name, it has podcasts in it, yeah. but it's become 
much more than just a podcast. It's more so like this movement of, you know, whether it be moving forward in your life professionally or personally or from a mental health aspect. It's like, how can we help more people more than just like talking? Right. Yeah. Some people might not dig on listening to podcasts or listening to us talk, but they might like what we're about. And so we wanted to have that available too. Yeah. So the podcast right now is planned to come out. Uh, it should be like in the next week or so. Okay. Um, Jasmine is the guru when it comes to like the computer the stuff, stuff, any of it. Honestly, yeah. I'm not at all. Like I'm really not. Um, and she's good at that stuff. So I just help with like content and basically anything she tells me. Then I'm yep. like, okay, I'll give you a deadline. Like I'm like, just tell me what to do when you need it by and like I'll do it. Cause that's how yep. I work. It's like, give me something to do, I'll do it. But she's really good at all the other stuff. So we have a ton of content. Um, and so she just needs to, she just needs to, cause I can. <laughs> she just needs to edit it and then yep. uh, then we're good to go. I might go there this weekend. She has the studio in her house. Yep. Um, so I might go there this weekend and get some done. But I leave for Vancouver. Vancouver on Monday because I'm going to a conference out there. So she's going to be without me for a little bit. Okay. So she does all the editing and she tells you what to do. So she's like the Greg. Yeah, I guess so. (laughs) She really is. Yeah. And I'm just like, I I feel like I contribute in meaningful ways. Just not like, you know. Well, it can't be the Get It Together <laughs> podcast with Jasmine and Allie without Allie. Yeah, exactly. Just like the Greg and Tim show can't be the Greg and Tim show without Tim. You need it. This is all you have to do today. Just put this over here and click this and do this and what? Yeah, and then he we're did just stay, there. He stayed one night after an interview <laughs> yeah. and watched uh, just the sp- – I just, I just my... throw the ball up in the air, the baseball, and catch it. Mm-hmm. And yeah. He just does everything else. It was yeah. very, very productive. <laughs> he provides very... That's literally what I'm like. Like, I'm just like, you're doing a great job, man. Like, good on you. Like, this looks awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> and her videos so far have been doing really well yeah. in terms of her over-opinionated mm-hmm. videos mm-hmm. and then other stuff that, that yeah. she's doing right now. So, yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing the Get It Together podcast. So, that's why I ask, when is some, it coming out? We have some good because stuff, for sure. We're looking forward to... Uh, to checking it out um what do you guys want to accomplish with the podcast what's the goal well i would be lying if i didn't say that we would like to eventually make some money um you know through sponsorship and stuff just because we put in so much work and time and effort that these days um you you really can't do all that unless like if like you know take time off work or do this or whatever we we put some money out there and you risk things so i think that that's ultimately going to be a stream i know that jasmine eventually wants to do this a lot more um i do too uh down the road but i think ultimately it's a matter of having those real discussions that are so uncensored we both work in a place where you have to be very careful about things you say different places but still the same in the sense that we can't be um we're both neutral really like we can provide a little bit of commentary but at the end of the day it's a matter of being neutral and for other people um so i think this one's gonna be more so raw and organic and like how we actually think about certain things and um, you know, tools to help other people, give them some laughs, ultimately, yep. um, relatable content and help. Maybe them. you guys going to have a whole episode about soccer. Yeah, we probably will, the but I'll shut it episode. down. The 12 minute episode about, about drinking s- and soccer. Yeah. Literally, we've had a, we've had a few episodes that we've done and we were like drinking White Claws and like, I'm like, we have to be careful about those ones because I find like as they get on, like, it's just like us making these terrible jokes that are like yeah. not when, even when we funny. White Claw episode? Well, that's why we put your vodka in the cup, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> so that people don't that's know. That's why I've been feeling funny. For that's why minutes. I'm feeling funky. <laughs> <laughs> I'm spinning. I, I have to grab Tim's phone really quick because we want to show you a video okay. of something that I found earlier today. So just one sec. Okay. So I found this video and I, I think it's very interesting. And I wanted to kind of get your perspective on it because, you know, you deal with mental health, mm-hmm. you deal with anxiety, you deal with with counseling yep. um so it's the top left video there tim if you can just turn it to ali and get her to check it out there was a study that i found pretty exciting they said the part of your brain that you get anxiety from is the same part of your brain that has gratitude you can't be grateful and anxious at the same time so then in the bible where it goes instead of being anxious be grateful it's so, this when is you so told me that. crazy to think that they were calling out legitimate things that scientists have found out about i like that a lot yeah. Um. There's. Did you show Jasmine that video? 
I or haven't. those people because she just sent me a clip from them or from that guy like okay. a couple days ago and it was um talking about like how we spend time worrying and essentially how that can go into um you know like worshiping the devil rather than worshiping god and so worrying is like a product of that so yeah. it's the same dude uh, yeah. which is really interesting i've never his, his seen his name him. is george janko yeah i've never he, seen him before that so. he used to be like the third person on the impulsive podcast with uh okay yeah one of the paul brothers like, i think it's logan paul mm. um and then he actually uh because he was outspoken about his faith uh the host i think it's logan paul would make fun of him mm. To the point where he actually quit the show, oh. and he actually started his own show, well, good for which him. is this one. And but the reason why I wanted to bring this up though is because like I think that a lot of this comes to the thought of you know I'm anxious, I'm anxious, I'm anxious, I'm anxious, but people forget to go I'm thankful, I'm thankful, I'm thankful, I'm thankful. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So what what are your thoughts on something like that where? I think that's so true. Um, I was just talking to my girlfriend today where she was like having a panic attack and texting me about it. And I was like, well, what are you doing right now? Like while you're texting me, like, where are you? Like, let's talk about that for a second. She's like, well, I'm in bed. I'm like, oh, you don't have like a busy day today. Like, no, I'm like, well, that's awesome. Like, it's like a mad, you know, it's like kind of just stopping right yeah. then and there. And I also think to like with anxiety, it's like a snowball. It's yeah. like a snowball effect, right? Like if you feed it and it'll just get bigger and eventually it's like growing and growing and growing. And I've been there. I've dealt with, I have generalized anxiety sort of. So it's totally under wraps now. But when I was young, it was like out of control. Um, so I get that it's difficult for people to, you know, especially if you have a diagnosis or whatever. I think it's difficult for people to have that stall, that buffer mm -hmm. before it goes into the snowball effect because if that's ultimately what it is, like, and I was just telling my girlfriend about it and saying, stop it right in its tracks, like stop it right in its tracks and, you know, pay homage to the fact that you're doing that because that's an act of self care yeah. to be able to go, okay, stop it right there. Don't let it grow. Don't let it change into anything more and go like, it's hard to do, but I'm also really proud of myself for just doing what I just did. You know what I mean? Like, it's such a big thing. And I think for me, too, and just as humans, we become overwhelmed and we get in the motion of Monday to Friday and all of our responsibilities and you feel it. But I think for me, when I start to feel that, I make a very big conscious effort to stop and look at all of the most amazing things. Like, I will fi I'll find five things that yeah. I'm grateful for. When I'm feeling really overwhelmed or worried about something that, um, you know, is coming up or like a deadline or like I have a huge workload, I just stop. I'll go outside and like take a deep breath of the fresh air. And like that was an amazing even just a breath of fresh air, like just to be outside and be grateful for that. Yeah. So like I find five things like in like my partner, the food in my fridge, this is a job that I have, you know, like I find yeah. that gratitude and I find that it, that in itself slowly will chip away at the anxiety that i have i heard a stat um that said something like uh of the things that go through your brain on average every day 74 percent or something like that were negative mm -hmm. and of those 74 percent things that you think 90 percent is cyclical or 95 percent mm -hmm. it means they're not a new thought it's just something that goes on and you repeat worrying about the same thing so i guess what you're saying is learning the strategies to to overcome some of those things, just to reset your brain. Yeah. Do you find um, that anxiety is something that is more intrinsically female? Mm. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, no. I'm not generalizing anything no. because, of course, there are some men yeah. in, in category and some women that aren't, but mm. to a point, yes. do women typically – deal with more anxiety in your yes, opinion i would i would say so um although i find that changing in the last few years and maybe that's just a product of i don't know a million things it could be also like inflation there's like so yeah. many things going on where people have to worry about more things um but i think just you know it goes without saying that women maybe think about things on a different level than men do right like really get into it pull things apart and i know that there are men that do a behave and think that way yeah. but i would say um more overwhelmingly it would be women right and so late like in the last i don't know a few years i've 
I've met a few of my friends or colleagues that are men that have really been talking about anxiety and that they've been struggling with it. And I think it's a it's a really heavy thing that we got going on in our world right now with, you know, all the stuff you have to keep up with. And like I said, the economy and inflation and yeah. providing and all the things that come with being a man and the expectations that you're supposed to meet too. I think that they are building even more so than um, than they ever have before. Like I think before it was always just kind of status quo, but men need to now be strong and soft and all these yeah. things. So, Do you believe in, and I know you said be a man, and when we say terms like, a man mm -hmm. sometimes people identify that this is what men do this is what women do um and now we've kind of gone away from that in society where we're saying there's no intrinsic roles mm. do you still believe there are uh quote-unquote roles that men typically should be in uh, uh, let's like provider leader of the home and, mm -hmm. and do you are you more old school in that thinking or are you more so in the new school that there are no actual defined roles for sexes. Um, when I was doing my undergraduate degree, I was definitely more so like down with the patriarchy and like, you know, very <laughs> Kill much. Kill men. Exactly. <laughs> because I was just surrounded in that. Um, and like I said, social influences are huge on brains that are going School through. influences. Oh, gosh. Like I, I was so like, like I was like a hardcore feminist. And but now... Uh, I'm quite literally the opposite. I'm back to my roots, like my Portuguese family, um, traditional roles and, yep. you know, Christian faith. And so, um, it's, you know, I think that there's things that like men can do. It doesn't have to be as rigid as we think, like, you know, like yep. he can do the dishes and make dinner every now and then those things can overlap. But at the end of the day, I do go back to the traditional household and that's just, you know, I don't know if that's a huge play in my culture or whatever but that's just kind of how i was raised and for me that's I, that's where i feel most comfortable yeah no that's yeah. awesome um i know that tim likes to ask this question so we are going to do some fun stuff in a second but i just wanted to before we were done taping uh you had mentioned you have stepkids mm -hmm. can, you mention, can you go into it like maybe short but not too short uh, the scenario in which that came about to be yeah so i was partner has kids well, that is, that's typically how it goes. But yes, um, so I like understand. we are common law, we're not married. Okay. Um, yeah. But I mean, I would still call them stepkids. Sometimes I call them bonus kids, depend on where we are. Yeah, um, and you're the bonus mom. Yeah, exactly. Bonus cool mom. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> okay. don't forget that piece. <laughs> um, but uh, I was on a dating app during the pandemic and I met, uh, well, I was swiping my life away and I met Matt, who's my partner. And um, I asked him right away, as you do, especially in your late 20s, it's like a pretty prominent thing that you need to ask. Yep. Um, and he did have kids. It's like the first thing you ask somebody is, have you been married? Do you have kids? Yep. He's like, never been married, have kids. I'm like, oh, you do? How many? He's like terrified to say because like three is like a, whoop, some people will run out the door and I'm like, okay, I really already liked his look and his vibe. So I'm like, I'm going to give it the benefit, a benefit of the doubt. I like kids too. I do. Um, and he said, I have three. I'm like, holy smokes. <laughs> <laughs> like, do you have any baby mama drama? Because that is something too. That's that a red I, flag. Yeah. Like, I don't want to get involved in that. I just couldn't. No. Um, but he did. He had three. They were young. They still are young, I guess, but they were younger. It was five years ago now. So yep. four and a half years. I don't know. Um, but, uh, so they were young and I was like, okay, they're super cute, send a picture and stuff. And I was like, this is going to be difficult, but co-parenting was good for him. And um, there was no like red flags. It was like happy hunky doryness. And yeah. I was like, okay, so I'm, you know, and then I said, do you want to have more kids? And he said, yeah, that's a really tough one. He said, but I also understand that if I were to get, you know, remarried and my partner wants to have children, that that would be something I would explore with them. Like yeah. right off the hot, no, I don't want another kid, but three is good. But like when you get into a new place and a new space and with a new lover and everything like yeah. that, it's, it's something to consider. So he does, because that's something for me is I want my own children as well. So yeah. who knows? We might be like Sound of Music. A ton of kids. Does Sound of Music I have a ton of kids? I was just about really? to make the comparison <laughs> when you said that. Nice. But I don't have to now. So yeah. this was, it was, I had to ask you about that uh, before we finish. Absolutely. So. so the question I have is, what is one piece of advice that you would give someone today that you wish you had when you were 18 years old? Hmm, 18, I think for me at that age, because I was going through so much with my mental health, um, 
I think it would honestly be very simple and it would just be that everything is gonna be okay um because it was like the world was so big and there's you know thinking about being 30 and and thinking about what you have to do when you grow up and then right now and you know like how am i ever going to get out of all of this chaos i think like everything will work out everything's yeah. going to be okay have faith and stop spending so much time like eating yourself alive and like just dwelling in all of that it's just like everything's gonna be good dude yeah. like, you know like chill like that is honestly yeah. what i want to tell myself like everything works out and my mom yeah. always tells me that she was like everything will work out we know it will it always does and so like yeah. i wish i could tell myself that because your mom telling you that is like yeah whatever mom <laughs> it yeah. doesn't doesn't count but um i think for me it would just been everything's gonna be okay and that it doesn't matter um you know what other people think yeah so just do you that's awesome. Yeah. Okay. And it's good to have a sense of humor. I was listening to Seinfeld, Jerry Seinfeld mm. talking about that. You go through enough crap in your yeah. life. You got to learn how to laugh. You do. And you mentioned that you and Jasmine you have a good sense of humor, which will take you a long way. So Yeah, awesome. absolutely. Yeah. 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 So we're going to transition to some of the end stuff that we do that are a bit more, it's a bit more fun. Okay. Okay. I'm into it. Uh, I have a couple. None of the whole episode hasn't been fun. <laughs> and, yeah. Well, by the way, where's your, um, if I had the reader on your forehead, where's it at? Oh, I'm actually doing really well yeah. right now. Okay, like, so I, like I would say battery... like I'm, I've been charged up a little bit from right. this because oh. it's a small setting and it's like real stuff. Right. It's not like politics or like fakeness. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I actually feel pretty good. I'll need an actual number. Okay, I'm going to sit at 70. 70. That's pretty good. That's a good one. Okay. Yeah. Where were you at when you started? Probably about a 50. 50 to a 60. Oh, so yeah. you're gaining. Yeah, you're, yeah, so you're I, gaining yeah energy. it's the tendency piece, oh, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Okay. So um, first of all, there is a huge issue and question and debate between the two of us. Okay. And I need you to help us solve this debate. Okay. There are two scenarios that Greg and I argue. <laughs> I'm confused at this debate. And one is, <laughs> is this considered a mustache and a beard oh this oh. debate yes or is it one beard like what you have right now well, or like what you both have what we both have okay. is this a beard you can judge top? based on mine instead beard. of tim's <laughs> and i've just started mine it's getting there i'm not asking you for critiquing mine that's fine um, but is this considered one beard or a beard and mustache combination um well, I think that it's kind of a – I'm just staring at your guys' face. <laughs> I would say it's a – well, that's a really good question. But what about goatee? Well, like so, where's the goatee fall into So the goatee this? would be this. This part, right? Like yeah. the connector. Yeah. The connection. This is a simple question. You don't need to ask. I'm going to say it's going to be a beard. Oh. Yes. Okay. What would you, are you saying it's separate? So he says that I have I, a mustache no, no, and a I beard. I just because you have a beard doesn't – have your mustache cease to exist it's there's all it's this do people is not mustache. like i'm trying to i can't even think about what somebody would look like, like some amish it. i think have no mustache but they have a beard oh, oh you're yeah, yeah right? i can think yeah. of that and now. then there's a goatee that's just the bottom like that's just goatee. what about soul patches and then soul patches. those are crazy yeah, <laughs> those are fun <laughs> um so that's checking that off the list so i was right so far no. so far so far okay yeah. right, more people have agreed with you okay. that's fine yeah. Uh, question: <laughs> Top three places to go on a date in Manitoba. What? No, do the whole thing. I, I changed it for you so no, that you can. I'm adding check. this one first. Top oh, three places okay. to go on a date. <laughs> um. Okay. Well, I think like I've never been there before, but every time I see pictures of it, I'm like, that looks like a good date place. It's Pine Ridge Hollow. Okay. okay. I've never been there. I've been to the you like the beach, is it, or, the beach chips. Is it really good? For the beach day? chips are so good. Yeah. See, there no. you go. The restaurant. Okay. I've only been to the restaurant. I haven't been there since they changed it all into like a whole Apparently village. Apparently it's great. You just went three yeah. weeks ago. Okay. That's great. Yeah. And you get a free dessert if it's your birthday. And you're, they don't even check your... It's always my birthday when I go home. Yeah, no, places, literally. So... Yep. You just told me it's your birthday. So I Pine Ridge Hollow, if you if you ever get there, that'll be one of their places. Yeah. And then two other places that you have been to. Um. Well, I know like they have, I just went to it in the winter, but I don't know if it's like an all the time thing. I think it is now, but it's one of those candlelight concerts. Have you seen them in your advertisements? Yep. We're going next weekend. Okay. It's incredible. This I week, went to the Coldplay Tribute. I did Coldplay Tribute and yeah. it was super cool. Ours is... Oh, Taylor Swift? Shoot. No, it's not Swift. I think it's the Beatles and Ooh, I, that would be a good one. And I'm forgetting now. 
that would be a good one. It's our anniversary this weekend. Okay. So yeah, we, we did ours. Yeah. I think we did ours just for Christmas or something, like just to go after Christmas for like a together thing. But that was a super cool, yeah. super cool This will be our first time, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, you'll really like it. Okay. It was super cool. Okay. Um, and now your go-to restaurant that if somebody came from ooh. out of town, you're going to like take them to this restaurant. This is that restaurant that you go to. And Debbie Fries. Yeah. Oh, that's a go-to. <laughs> um, it, I think it depends on the person and how much I want to hang out with them again. You know, like if it's an intimate setting or not. But uh, we went to, I don't know how to say it. It's Enotica or Enotica. Like E O E N O T E C A. It's like the new kind of vibe where you share plate. So you oh, order the okay. one, like you order a bunch of different uh, things. It's I like Nola. Like right. It's like Oxbow type vibe. We're not getting you into can't it share again. food. No, it's, I. Uh, we've gone over this in other. You can't. Yeah. We're not, <laughs> we're not gonna talk about it again. But too. I do like to share food. It's it was, just awesome. It was actually the vibe was good, too. and their asparagus <laughs> au gratin was like. We tried to recreate it when we got home. It was nothing like it, but it was an amazing food. Yeah, and I always ask that question because I like new data ideas. Yeah, you so. should go there. It's incredible. Yeah, you you go. should go to Pine Ridge yeah. too. We go, we go every couple months. I know. We love Pine Ridge <laughs> uh, The person that dead or alive that you would most want to spend 20 minutes to an hour having a conversation with. Ooh. Mm, that's such a good one. Dead or alive? Yeah. Wow, that opens it up. And if they're right dead, up. they're li- alive now. Yeah, like yeah. they're there. Honestly, I think my like as soon as you asked it, my first hit in my brain would be Bob Marley. Yeah. Um, and just because like I try really hard to, um, you know, take on that vibe of of how he how he perceived the world and how he perceived stress and how he perceived um, issues and like glorified peace. And so I think. That is like where my initial brain went. And then my second, like secondary thought where I kind of like pushed it away. I was like, well, no, not right now. was Joe Rogan. Oh, and yeah. So Joe Rogan. Those are two fun. good names. Those are like, I was like, yeah. these are contrasting, but also good. Yeah. 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 And you picked yeah. one alive and one dead person. Yeah. So that works. So and I gave you two, even though the yeah. question was one. Have you seen yes. the Bob Marley movie? Yes, I have. Oh, it's it incredible. Good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'm doing this part this time, Tim. So you can just Let, keep score. Can, can I explain this? Yeah. You can explain you it, but I'm going to do it. to explain how this works, how this or that works, even though you can pick one or not the other. He goes into this whole rambling thing <laughs> about explaining this or that. You have two options. You have to choose one of the two options. You have to choose one of the two options. You can't say I I am going to I pass. Defer, right. I defer. You can't say tie. <laughs> These things don't exist. So originally, Tim Again. said you could say pass. Originally. <laughs> no. Okay. Jasmine actually picked <laughs> none of two of them. Wow. So she was the only person that Tim allowed to not pick one. Yeah. But you you have to pick one. Okay. And and this has been added over the last couple of years. When you pick one. Years. <laughs> it's been <laughs> Sorry, episodes. My, my apologies. <laughs> when you pick one, the other one does not exist. Okay. Okay. You You're literally not have the other one for till the dawn of time. Like it's yeah. gone. You're speaking the other one out of existence. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. I'm so Greg so will ready. now give are you ready? I f- I for am this ready. This or that the lightning round. Cue lightning round. Oh, okay. <laughs> So you can explain why as well. It's not that lightning, <laughs> lightning round. So if you want to stop and explain why and explain yourself, go ahead. Apple or Android? Apple. No comment. I've been time? winning. I've been winning the last few, so it's okay. I'll lose one. <laughs> okay. Beach or Europe? Europe. Pizza or pasta? Pizza. Mm. Wait, she's second guessing it. <sighs> Like, I love pizza, but I also love pasta. Yep. Like, Italian is just the way to be. Um, I think pizza... And you're Portuguese. Like, yeah, pasta's... I think pizza, just because my partner doesn't ever let me get it. So, it's kind of like this, like... <laughs> he doesn't let you Yeah, get he's it. always like, oh, pizza. I'm going to order in some pizza. No, you can't. Yeah, he's like, why? Why can't we ever order anything else? I'm like, we never get it, man. So I'm I'm not... I, Have you had I Little think... Pizza Heaven? Oh, Yeah. Have you oh, had, yeah. uh, well, obviously you've had Santa Lucia. Mm-hmm. Um, what's the other one that we had recently? I, yeah. Mominos? No, not. not <laughs> anyway. <laughs> it didn't, it I, didn't I, stick I, with you? So this is why I don't go to buffets. My wife just won't do buffets. Oh, she won't? No, because it's the touching. The yeah. Outside. Like, see, it's like one of those things. It's like But you're okay with taking food off my plate. No, I'm okay with it. She's not. Yeah. She's also okay with not you not taking food off my plate. Yeah, but it, I enjoy it's it. It's a lot of... Yeah. Yeah. It's my happy place. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. Pizza's my happy place. Yeah. Uh, sappy rom-com or action movie? 
Sappy rom com. Of course. Mm-hmm. <laughs> of course. <laughs> wow, that's generalization. That's <laughs> the right answer. Okay. Counseling or public speaking? Ooh, I'm public speaking. Yeah? Mm-hmm. So if you could, then you wouldn't be able to counsel anymore. You're now a public speaker for the rest of your life. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That would be the one. Karaoke or dancing at a club? Karaoke. Really? Yeah. You have a good Perfect. Voice. So. Sometimes. I think so. Sometimes? So, Sometimes. Lorraine, uh, can you hit the music? It'll come up on the. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> She's like, you didn't prep me for this. <laughs> uh, podcasts or books? Podcasts. Staycation or vacation? Ooh, vacation. Of course. Morning person or night owl? Ooh. I think like night owl, but I'm. I want so bad to be a morning person. Like I just, I just, <laughs> I Wanting desire. Wanting to be something is not I know, the same like, thing. I think like in my later years, as I'm saying, as I grow <laughs> up and, you know. <laughs> I, I endeavor to be a morning person. Yeah, like it's right just, now. like right now I'm pretty, pretty crusty in the morning. So, so you're a night owl. Yeah, we'll uh, go with that. We'll go with that one. <laughs> Travel for work or work from home? Ooh, Ooh, and one has to disappear. Well, that's right. What does travel for work mean? Like, 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 like she's going to Vancouver. Downtown. She's going oh. to Calgary. She's going to all these places. You know places. what? I'm going to say work from home because my social battery would be just lagged. Like, it would be so bad if I only had to travel for work. Okay. Yeah. Spontaneous adventure or carefully planned trip? Carefully planned trip. Absolutely. So you are a two? Is that a two, Lorraine? On the Enneagram? Uh, like an eight because you're an eight that so, was off. <laughs> so we'll find well i don't know the answer <laughs> we'll find out though when you do the enneagram yeah, let's see if you are 100%. binge watch tv or a movie marathon Ooh. so like all three of the back to the future movies or a whole season of this is us I'm not saying like those mm, shows, but like those are examples. I could do Harry examples. Potter back. Like I could do Harry Potter. So movie all marathon? Of the movies. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Board games or video games? Board games. Mindfulness or blasting music? Blasting music. Uh, and the last one is being a guest or being a host on a podcast? Being a guest. Yeah. It's easier. Which is interesting because I have one. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I just think this is great. You guys are so organized. Like, I didn't have to do <laughs> anything for it. <laughs> Tim says the same thing. Yeah. I, that's exactly <laughs> I it. I do anything for it. What I just show it? up. <laughs> and that, oh, the last question is my beard or Tim's beard? Well, I feel like it's not fair. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, you don't have to answer that one. <laughs> unless, it's, unless it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, don't answer it. I will say that yours looks a lot like Matt's does right now. Okay. So that's good. Brownie points for that. Right? So I, I have not tried to grow this out since I was 18 years old. We did a production at our church, an Easter production, where everybody had to grow a beard. Oh. And mustache combination, I should clarify. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> and, wait a second. Uh, I, I clarified. <laughs> and uh, it was so bad that I had... I, th- I thought I had PTSD that I never tried again after mm. that. So I was like, it, it's been 40 years. Or sorry, 30 years. My math is off. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, you're not 58. I, I, should, uh, I should try again. Yeah. Get back on that proverbial horse. Yeah. So he's been doing it for a whole month. How does it feel? Three weeks. Itchy. How do you feel? Itchy. Itchy. Good. Do, but do you think he could pull off just the mustache? I think he could pull Ooh, off just the mustache. It'd be a duster and a half. Yeah, yeah right? It really right? would be. Put it in the buffet file. <laughs> yeah. And, and I got one last question before we close off the show here is, have you ever done something mm-hmm. to change your appearance mm-hmm. and your significant other didn't notice? Yes, Botox. <laughs> okay. Yeah. How long did it take them to notice? They never did until I told them. Oh, really? Yeah, like I could have went for that forever and he would never know until I was like, watch my forehead, it can't move it. But yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Has he ever changed something and you not noticed? Yes, yeah. Um, But but they're very like so... He's like, I trimmed my sideburns. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, that's what? So much. Uh, that's I like would small. never yeah. even notice that. Or he's no. like, yeah. like I, yeah, just things like that. Or like I shaved this side of my hair just a little. I went to a two instead of a this. Yeah, like, it's not enough. And he's I, like, I've been flaunting around all day. And yeah. you haven't <laughs> said anything. <laughs> <laughs> I've changed something and Lorraine hasn't noticed. And now like it's still? been 23 days. Yeah. So, you don't know what it is right now? 
She doesn't know what it is. So and I'm hoping she never ever finds out. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel that you're just gonna drop hints till No, I day. haven't ever dropped a hint. That's all I've ever okay. said. Wow. Yeah. So one day know? she will know. One day? No, nope. we're not gonna You're gonna have to find Do out on you your own. Of course. <laughs> Of course. <laughs> of course. He can, he notices things. He he pays attention. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> you would have noticed. Anyway, well, thanks for joining us today. Absolutely. This has been a fantastic conversation. I hope that uh Tim's learned something from this. <laughs> Many things. Many yeah. things. A myriad of things I've learned. I've learned that I can go to Elkhorn and go to the spa yeah. and there will be almost nobody there. Yeah. And I will love that. On Wednesday. Because right. I am an introvert yeah. with extroverted tendencies, meaning that, like, if I go to that spa, I want it to be as empty as possible. Yeah, me too. Like, I want to hang out in the spa with just a couple people. Yeah. Right? And you won't have to do naked massage. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole other thing that we have in discussion. Oh, that's a whole other thing, <laughs> eh? The can of worms. Do you wear underwear when you get massaged or not? Yeah. So, anyway. So... <laughs> We will discuss that off the air. So thank you for watching the Greg and Tim show today. We appreciate everything. And uh, don't forget to hit the like button, the subscribe button, and uh, comment on what you think of Tim's beard. Because he has one. <laughs> and uh, if you know what's different about me, and you notice what's different about me, feel free to put the comments in the comments below as well. So anyways, Tim, thanks for joining me today. Thank you, and thanks to our guest. And thanks to our guest, Allie. Thanks so much for having me, guys. Thanks for watching the Greg and Tim Show podcast. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with all your friends. Sharing is caring.